This paper will discuss the three major learning theories, behaviorism, cognitism, and constructivism. I have picked a few tenets from each that will fit my teaching style and my classroom environment. I believe there are three pillars of teaching that will create high quality learning. These include the constructive theory, where my students must first understand and make sense of the material presented. Second is the cognitive theory, which includes information processing and students taking charge of their learning. And finally, behavior theory will exemplify how my students will practice and apply their new skills and understanding and make the curriculum a permanent part of their repertoire. The theorist Jean Paget pioneered a learning theory widely used today called constructivism. Paget's constructivism views learning as a process in which the students construct knowledge based on their past experiences. I will be teaching fifth grade English language arts and reading. Reading involves a complex integration of systems. Successful readers do much more than process information. They bring their experience and prior learning both in and out of school to their reading in order to construct meaning and develop new understandings. That's why my students will best learn through differentiated instruction. Differentiated instruction strategies are important because it accommodates every student's specific learning style and as a teacher I must keep in mind the different learning styles of my students. There is little research on learning styles but it does differentiate between how a student learns and how they prefer to learn. So they might prefer to learn a certain way and seem like they are understanding but in fact it could mean they aren't processing the information as deeply. It's also important to remember that not all students learn the same way and it is important to differentiate your curriculum to meet the needs of all your students. Presenting your curriculum in multiple, multiple modalities, for example, would be beneficial. An example of an assignment in my class is I would have my students choose a book of their liking and create idea boards on how they can make it more multimodal. Students will come out with an interactive 3D text using different materials. The end of the year project would be them writing their own multimodal book and showing what they've learned from the year. It would be interesting to see what they come up with and if they incorporate their own learning styles on their idea board. In a constructive classroom, the teacher acts as a facilitator who encourages students to explore within the given content. Students may work together to organize their ideas and learn from each other to construct their own knowledge. I believe students retain their new knowledge more effectively through activities that lead to discovery and discussion of previous and new knowledge. I will also keep in mind the student's cognitive level and attempt to build only on that knowledge. Pygat's theory explains that children learn from others around them. The stage my students will be in is a concrete operational stage. In this stage, it is important for students to have a more hands-on approach with concrete objects and situations. For example, in my class, I will have visual aids hanging on the walls in my classroom. The visual aids can be anything from having effective reading strategies, proper writing etiquette, etc all in view for the students to refer to when they need. Knowing which stage your students are is an important to developing a real prepared teaching plan. Next, I will discuss behaviorism and how it will be implemented in my classroom. Behavior learning theory or behaviorism utilizes key ideas from the work of B.F. Skinner, who theorized that learning occurs through a series of rewards or punishments. While Skinner believed that all learning could occur this way, I would use utilize behaviorism in my classroom as a tool for behavior management. According to Skinner, rewards increase the likelihood that behaviors will be repeated, while punishments decrease the likelihood of repetition. I could have a contingency contract set up between me and my students on appropriate behavior in the classroom, like no running, no speaking when someone else is think, uh, speaking, raise your hand, etc. Rewards for these behaviors could be extra time at recess or lunch with the teacher, while punishments might be no recess at all or a quiet lunch. I would work with my students to enact a fair contract that we both can agree on. I will also utilize a token reinforcement system. When a student raises their hand and waits to be called on, they receive positive feedback from me and a prize like a sticker or token. These practices will reinforce good behavior and hopefully reduce misbehaviors. The last thing I will discuss is cognitism. Teachers are role models for their students. The students will be observing the teacher's actions to their daily life in the classroom. They will also imitate the teacher's actions. As a teacher, I will also use observational learning to demonstrate how things need to be done, as younger kids tend to learn better from seeing it performed by someone else. The saying goes, monkey see, monkey do. They see an adult doing something and they repeat it. Albert Benetter Saj 
Social cognitive theory in the classroom identifies a student's ability to regulate his or her own behavior based on what has been observed as appropriate or inappropriate in certain situations. It's important for teachers to be a good example for their students through individual behavior. To support my students' cognitive development, they need to both physical and social stimulation. They must be able to remember what they understood. Children bend knowledge by doing and thinking on their own. Proper instruction can affect brain development and lead to the formation of new connections in the brain. Cooperative learning will be another great way for my students to learn. It gives the students opportunities to work with others and see different points of views. Vygotsky's social cultural theory of development explains that children learn best from others, but to Vygotsky, they learn from more knowledgeable members of society, parents, teachers, etc. Vygotsky believed the role of social interaction in cognitive development is that it fosters development. He also believed that cultural tools were important in learning as well. This is when graphic organizers could come in handy. They help the students organize information so it is easier to comprehend in a visual manner. I would use graphic organizers to help my students compare different, con different concepts and organize their writing, like how to develop a paragraph or what is the difference between there and there, etc. Knowing which stage your students are is important to develop a well-prepared teaching plan. In order to effectively teach students, teachers must remain aware of their student stage of development and also entirely their development, mind and body. My students will be in the industry versus inferiority stage of psychosocial development, according to Erickson. In this stage, there's an eagerness to engage in productive work and face being compared to other children. I would start the year with an identity flip book. In this lesson, the students will see each other's personalities and identities. They will compare and contrast their own personal flip book. This will encourage them to act on a choice of who they are and what they want. This lesson gives them the opportunity to show independence and take responsibility. No one can complete this flip book other than themselves as it is about their own identity and no one else's. Teachers should always be learning as our world and technology is constantly changing. I want to grow personally and professionally more every year and this takes continuous learning and engaging myself in a wide variety of activities. Although it is not always easy for a person to evaluate themselves, I believe it is important for growth. I'll take notes at the end of each day and even during my teaching lessons to evaluate what is working and what is not working. By reviewing these notes and the students' responses, I can gauge whether my lesson was effective and if I need to revisit the topic or maybe change it up in the future. I will choose aspects from different learning theories, but I will not follow them in their entirety. It is up to me to have my own learning theory to thoroughly teach my students and ensure they succeed.